to get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's AI for Work training session. Today, we're going to explore the transformative power of generative AI and how it can revolutionize the way that you and your team works. So we've got a few people um, in here so far, and I'd love to kick off with a little bit of a poll. Um, GB, if you wouldn't mind sending the poll out to everybody, um, how would you currently rate you or your own personal um, organizational uh, use of um, AI or your team or your organization's use of AI? If you could pop that in the poll for us and I'll give you a little uh, quick minute. Um, so we've got some not at alls. Uh, we've got some moderately awesome. Fantastic. That's good to see. Um, and a couple more um, not at alls. Very good. All righty. Um, GB, we might end that and hopefully uh, you will all um, get something out of today as we go through. If we could end that poll, GB, and we will uh, move on. A little bit of an introduction to me um, and um, what I am doing. I'm an AI for work trainer and business coach. Um, I am a simple consultant. I work with a group of consultants globally. There are about there was 30 of us in the beginning uh, of the year, and um, we've exploded um, to over a hundred so far. Um, previously, my background, um, I am a former finance and retail exec. I was the GM at Lululemon, helped to grow up from $2 million to $100 million. I've worked for Ripcurl, Lorna Jane, and a number of tech startups as well. So I understand business, um, especially from a finance and operations side, um, but I'm also a graduate of the AICD. And so I really bring also a governance and risk lens to um, AI. Um, and um, I love helping businesses do things better, faster, and uh, probably more scalably uh, rather than cheaper. I was at an AICD conference actually in March, and I got to have the pleasure of um, Dr. Aisha Khanna. She's the co-founder of um, Addo, a global AI agency. She's been in the space for over 30 years. That's how long AI has actually been around. And, and she said that the you know, purpose of AI is actually to amplify human potential. And while she spoke about governance and the importance of it to us as the audience, as directors, one of the biggest takeaways for me was that she said that there is not a single business on the planet that should not be using generative AI to make roles more productive, more competitive, um, and allow space for more creation. So um, that was really eye-opening for me, being there um, with a director's lens on so I hope to um, help you um, gain that insight today. What I'm hearing a lot out there in the marketplace is I know I need to get into this, but I, either I don't know where to start or I don't know what's possible. So that's what I really hope to help um, you explore with me here today. Um, so um, at Simple Academy, we have three flagship training programs so far um, with them under the umbrella of AI. We have AI for Foundations, um, which we'll be going through in depth today, AI for Leaders, and then AI for Execs. Um, we also have AI for Life and AI for Kids coming up as well, because um, as parents, navigating the world and the future of their work is going to be increasingly important for us as parents. So AI Foundations is really about training to get started with AI and how to use AI more productively um, in your specific role, whether you're a um, solopreneur or whether you're inside an organization. AI for Leaders is all about how do we now manage and lead a team that's already using AI productively because work is going to be changing and the shape of work is going to be changing. And then finally, our AI for Executives program is how do we actually manage and lead a company that is AI powered now? And it's really about teaching meta level skills um, because we are changing the way that work is being done. And we need to change our thinking as an executive um, to lead AI powered organizations. But before we get into all of that, let's just have a conversation. You know, why AI? Things are moving so fast in the world of AI. The first thing to understand is that employees want AI. There has been a report out recently by Microsoft that shows 75% of global knowledge workers are using AI at work, whether the companies are endorsing that or not. Surprisingly, the majority of those users have only started using it in the last six months. So that is a shift that is quite unprecedented when it comes to technology adoption in the workplace. 
The second one is that those people that are using AI, especially the power users, are saying that it's actually helping them save time, which isn't surprising. 85% are saying that it's helping them focus on their most important work with about the same saying it's helping them to be more creative because it's freeing up from the mundane routine tasks. And then 83% saying that it's actually helping them enjoy their work more. So people are using it, they want it, and it's helping. Thirdly, companies are hiring for it. So 66% of um, leaders are saying that they actually wouldn't hire someone in the future without AI skills. And 71% would say they'd actually hire a less experienced candidate with AI skills than those without them. So companies are now on the lookout for that skill set. There was actually a report out last week in Australia that said by 2030, there um, is estimated to be a skills shortage in the AI and in the tech sector of 200,000. So it really is going, going to be changing the game. So there's as much, there's a lot of hype around the roles that will be re replaced. Um, it is just um, going to be a shift in the workforce um, over the next um, 10 to 15 years. Years. Um, and then lastly, these numbers are only going to go up. Um, so that's gone from zero to 50% of knowledge workers in the last 12 months. Um, and that's with as bad as AI is ever going to be. Um, we all know that there are challenges in certain um, instances of um, ChatGPT and certainly Copilot, um, but these numbers are going to continue to go up. So um, now is the time to start thinking about how do we best equip ourselves, understand what, what's possible so that we can really um, drive the future for our, ourselves and as well as our teams. So why now? Why is now the exact right time to be doing this? Well, for a few reasons. For the first time, people are finding out that they can actually get real work done with AI and it can get, get done better, faster and more scalably, freeing up time to innovate, to create and to think more strategically and to enjoy work more. So a little bit of um, an example and an explanation of where GPT has come from over the last uh, 12 months. So um, not even a year ago, six months ago, we had GPT-3. We didn't really even hear about GPT-1 um, and 2. Um, and this is a little dolphin here. Um, and that is basically representative of the amount of compute power that went into training uh, GPT-3. And the outputs were akin to a year three level, um, you know, a smart grade three um, level output. We now have 4.0, um, that is a killer whale. And so that again is a, and that's just been in six to eight months between the two versions. That is now graduated. That's the amount of, uh, again, input and the way they're training the computers that are um, get creating the output. That output is now considered to be a the super smart when you're in that higher paid version, the smartest of the smart high school student across every single possible subject matter. Um, and the next version, GPT-5, we're looking at this humpback whale um, and the amount of energy and um, uh, training and compute power that's actually going to be going in to um, the next version of GPT, which is um, likely to be at the PhD level again across every single sector. So um, this blue dot is where we are today. Um, GPT-5 um, will be um, the future um, and again, it is going to continue to evolve. So the moral of the story, these platforms and tools continue to evolve. Even just in the last couple of months, the um, the improvement in the output, the speed and the um, quality of the outputs have has improved dramatically. So right now, I'm actually going to show you a, an, a marketing tool that's been built by an agency owner, previous marketing agency owner, who's a member of our Simple community where he has found that AI can now do almost the entire marketing flows better than a marketing agency. So I'm going to hop right over now into our platform um, via GPT. And I have lost my screen. Sorry, just I'll just get it up again. Uh, apologies for that. I'll just get into GPT. Just give me one sec, sorry. There's always something when you've got technology. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I've got it open here. I'm just going to flip over into the screen. So 
I am going to, this is an example of an outbound agency tool. So I've just got someone else in the waiting room here. So this is an example of a, um, a whole flow of an outbound sequence. So I'm going to get started here. Um, I just checking, um, can you give me a thumbs up that you can see my chat GPT screen before I continue? I'll just check on that to make sure that you can all see what I'm doing there. All right, so um, what I am doing now, I'm going to actually just pop in this example into the um, agency flow and we're going to get started. So what this is going to demonstrate is an outbound email marketing sequence. So um, this sequence is going to get started with um, handing over, basically when you think about an agency, we hand work over to um, an account rep inside an agency. Um, that account rep is has got the assignment and they're going to hand over to the um, core customer customer psychology experts. So that core customer psychology experts, um, I'm going to talk through and explain this, but it's writing faster than I can even explain it or read it to you, is going to now un um, uncover based on the input. And again, I only had a one sentence input here, the dreams of my ideal customer, the outcomes that they will resonate with most. So business growth, professional prestige, client success. Um, we're going to flip into their past values. And so again, this is getting into the core psychology of the ideal customer. I've run this over and over again for different businesses. Um, and most businesses like, wow, that's, you know, pretty much, you know, 80 to 90% on the money. You can obviously interact with it. It is generative to, um, you know, dial things and tweak things up. But on the whole, we go into the fears, the suspicions and the enemies. Um, it's actually pretty production level good. So our next person we're going to hand over to is our, um, our core, our brand story expert. And we're going, they're going to actually take us through the brand story, putting our customer front and center as the hero. Um, so the target audience is business coaches ready to launch an AI consultancy. They have a problem, an external problem, an internal problem, and then a philosophical problem. They meet a guide, um, your company, um, who gives them a plan, who calls them to action and gives them, um, you know, helps them avoid failure and creates um, success in the end. This, once we've done that amount of work, and as a GM in the past, I've actually engaged um, agencies and, you know, it often starts with a whole bunch of us sequestered in the boardroom, backwards and forwards, questions, interviews, and months of backwards and forwards to be able to deliver that outcome. We've done that. If I had have actually run it straight through, it probably would have delivered it in less than a minute. Um, but I am now going to hand over to the copywriter team and we're going to deliver uh, an outbound email sequence that's based on my core customer psychology. So we can select any time frame here. I've done this over a month, over 90 days, but I'm just going to do it over a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So just because of, of time, uh, because it will go ahead and draft the emails based on the customer's journey. When you have them in your nurture, nurture sequence, you want to take them on that hero's journey. So our first one is introduction and value proposition. Our next one, talking about the, the fear, the overcoming the doubts and building trust. And our third one, urgency and a direct call to action. Over the month long one, it's a lot more gentle in terms of the time frame. But this next step where I'm actually going to hand over to the creative director. So that creative director um, is going to review that. And what we've learned through um, our work at Simple is that the more you critique your own work at that next level of a person, um, the better the output is. So you can see here uh, that uh, we've got from the creative director some suggestions for the body as well as the ex um, revised output. Um, and then we also probably have down here some tone adjustment based on the customer psychology. Um, we're going to now flip that back to our copywriter to get our final drafts. Um, and then what we've learned and what we teach people, um, it's all about the ROI. We wrap most of our um, projects up and we teach this in business. You know, CEOs want ROI for um, training programs. So we're actually going to wrap this up and figure out how much would this have cost us if we had done this externally through an agency. Um, this is in also US dollars. So it's given us an estimate of um, by role, how many hours with a cost. So this would have cost us approximately... Uh, 15,000 US dollars, um, which I know I've personally paid for just for the first two steps. And you can imagine that this 
can branch off after those first two steps into any um, marketing, marketing activity. So right now I'm going to flip back to the um, presentation and I am going to go to my next slide. So these are the steps that we've actually just gone through. And this is an example of what we will teach you um, if you go through the um, black belt training or um, a member of your team. So for the first time, um, what is uh, really possible is that we can actually deliver that provable ROI. Um, and from our experience, everybody that goes through this training actually can build these kind of tools. Before we start, though, one of the things I'd love to share is that this is as much about psychology as it is about technology. Um, this is all about mentoring others through what we call a human-to-human AI-powered process. So we're going to tell you some stories. So we had a stay-at-home mom who's part of our um, network as well. She um, She's come back into the workforce after 20 years, deathly afraid of technology, we put her through the program. She actually beat her, her CEO through the Black Belt program, and she's now answering the phone, getting problems from the clients, putting it into and building a GPT to solve the problem before she even delivers the uh, phone call to her CEO. We also have um, a fractional CFO who used to give up 20 hours a month um, doing month-end financial reporting, now getting it done in um, under two hours during the week. And then an overworked manager hiring for uh, high turnover positions, you know, three, 400 applicants who has built her own GPT to actually create a rubric assessing applicants against the um, job application. So um, she's able to now spend more time with her family. Um, so it's absolutely about psychology as, as it is about technology. Um, what we've also learned is there are generally six stages of transformation as we go from the human to AI powered human, from indifference through skepticism, fear, embarrassment, confidence and transformation out the other side. So over these next couple of slides, I'm gonna go reasonably quickly, have a think about where you might be at um, on your AI journey. So we go from indifference. So this is where individuals might exhibit a lack of interest or concern, um, a lack of awareness or understanding, and they really don't want to, they don't want to interact and they just don't understand how it could affect their current roles or tasks. Into skepticism, where awareness is starting to grow, but there's um, doubt about the actual practical um, benefit of AI and reluctance to spend too much time um, learning more about it and really a difficult uh, difficulty shifting from that skepticism to um, a, an open growth mindset around it. Then we hop into fear where they're actually starting to recognize the potential of it um, and that they start to worry about job redundancy or displacement. Um, and fewer future um, unknowns, um, as well as the complexity of AI. Then into embarrassment, where they're starting to see, okay, they, they've got a, a bit of a lack of um, knowledge, but it's actually easier than they thought it was going to be. Um, and the results um, have been pretty good. So um, then into confidence with increased exposure, um, they actually start to gain confidence in their ability to work with AI and how to leverage it to get valuable results. Um, and then by the time we get to Brown Belt, we have experienced transformation where they're fully integrated into the daily workflows and mindsets. So we're going to hop another poll onto the screen. We'd love to know where you think you are um, at your journey on these six, six stages of AI transformation. GB, if you could pop that poll up for everybody and they could um, take that poll right now. And we'll just uh, give it a couple of minutes. Some embarrassment. Got it. I've been there too. We've got confidence. Fantastic. Love that. Probably Simon. Some embarrassment. Oh, good. All right. We might wrap that one up as well. Thanks, GB. Uh, we will end that poll and move on to the next, next bit where we're actually going to jump in uh, to exploring our program. So our AI found for foundations, um, we're going to give you an overview of each one of these belts. Um, and then we're actually going to do some actual work here today. We're going to go through um, the white belt in absolute detail. Our white belt is all about getting com comfortable with the base model tools. I am yet to have anybody go through um, the white belt session and 
not learn at least one thing. I, I do get a lot, oh yeah, I'm all good with ChatGPT, um, but I hope that I will um, share some insights with you today that will give you something new to learn. Um, in our yellow belt, we're going to start using it to be more productive in our roles and walk you through five different tasks that will help you uncover specifically how to do that, even if you are a solopreneur in your own business. Um, Orange Belts um, is then all about using AI to be a cognitive super system, basically having the world's top, top experts like Gary V, Adam Grant or Brene Brown in your uh, in any area of business in your pocket, um, as you know, 24 hours a day on demand. Our green belt is then all about building AI tools to um, your biggest problems. Um, and the biggest insight that we found here is that it's almost way faster to build the tool than it is to do the work manually once. Uh, so we're going to show every employee in a business or you how to actually build your own specific role coach and how GPT can help you in your role. In Blue Belt, we're going to talk about tools uh, that actually get 100x improvements in actual work processes. We're going to give you a step-by-step -step process in order to work through accomplishing that. Um, it's here where I really started to understand it's as much about mindset and process um, as, as it is about technology, um, but it was something that I really had to experience and work through myself to really understand how a, a 100x improvement is actually possible. Then Purple Belt um, is all about the future and how um, AI can provide even more value for you in your role as well as the business. Brown Belts, we're going to be working through what we call AI agents, um, which is automation of a series of GPTs um, that get you the output that you need. The marketing agency tool that I described before is an example of that where we're going across multiple roles and we're going to show you examples of how to build them to get a thousand time improvements on um, activities that you do on a routine basis. Um, and then we um, hit our black belt, which is um, where we end up uh, mentoring others through that AI to human AI powered process, um, as well as really um, understanding how to build our own strategy tools. So before we hop into showing you specifically um, our white belt training, uh, we can't compress um, all of these belts into one training session, but I will be going through the white belt. Um, and this is an overview of our structure of each session of our black belt program. So our first level, we, we do a review of the program to recap where we're at. Where we're at. We then actually take you through some training um, of the belt. We give you homework because it's all about having you and your team get certified all the way through to black belt. So we take you through what the homework is and then how to get certified in the belt for that week. And then we wrap up each session with um, open Q&A with me directly. So let's hop right in now to our white belt. Nothing much to review at this stage of the white belt. So into our training, let's get on with it. Um, so white belt, um, getting started. I'm going to presume um, our tool of choice today is ChatGPT. You can choose to use Copilot if you so wish. We do find um, that the outputs from ChatGPT 4.0 at the moment, and especially when we're looking at those more complicated task flows, the output is significantly faster and better as a result. That's what we will be using today. So if you have it, fire it up. Um, and I also recommend that we also install it on our phones. These apps are getting infinitely better on mobile technology. Then there's some things in the mobile app that you can't do on the desktop version. So we want to make sure that you have that installed on your phone. We've got some demonstrations um, that you'll be able to pick some uh, really cool things up today. Okay. So the first thing that we're actually going to get started with um, is um, import uh, and outputs. Um, our outputs, think of it like a deliverable. So the one that most people um, get started with, uh, everybody here has probably done this already, is um, text-to-text output. It's, it's a, an incredibly powerful modality. So the potential use cases for text-to-text -text output, you could use it for strategic decision support or some crisis management advice, something that I use it for regularly, leadership coaching. I've actually got a platform that has hundreds of bespoke GPTs that are already built across many, many competencies, hundreds of them. Um, and we're using that in a number of coaching organizations to actually enhance our coaching um, insights and the experience for our candidates. 
So that is being used um, today um, already, um, performance analysis um, and regulatory compliance as well. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is actually play along with me. Um, this is what we call a meta level prompt. So we are going to pop this into the chat. GB, if you could do that for me so you can play along with me. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, I'm going, uh, I'm trying to do this. If there is one thing that you take away from today, anything that you're trying to do, use this prompt to find out how chat GPT can actually help you. So my specific example, and I'm going to flip over into uh, chat GPT, um, I am going to ask uh, chat GPT, I'm trying to get people signed up for my webinar and I'm struggling to drive traffic to it, list all the ways you can help me chat GPT. Okay, so content marketing, um, we've got blog posts, um, video marketing, and we've got some social media, some influencer marketing. So some of these we already know, some of them we probably use, but it might be one or two that I'm not doing yet that I actually want to, you know, explore a little bit more. So joint ventures. Um, I haven't done that yet. So I'm actually going to ask it. So what I'm doing here, rather than just replying in the in the baseline message, I'm going to highlight what I want to interact and generate a conversation with GPT. I'm going to click reply and say, please go, go deeper here. And we'll see what it actually comes back and gives me. Just so you know, it is because it is generative AI, it is going to give me different outputs every time I ask it a question. So every time I've run this, it gives me different outputs. So um, this obviously is not um, something I have pre-prepared. So joint ventures for webinar promotion. So it's given me a couple of ideas on how to do that, approaching them, planning the webinar, promoting the event um, during the webinar. So it's given me a whole lot and I can continue to go deeper and get it to actually create a joy, joy, joy JV partnership agreement as well. So that is just from a one sentence meta level prompt. All right. So back to our presentation. I'm going to move now into our input text and output to image. So a bunch of different use cases for this branding concepts, infographic creation, process visualization, um, marketing material development as well. Um, now, uh, this is still certainly not uh, the most sophisticated outputs, um, Dalio inside of GPT. Um, Midjourney, if you're a graphic designer, uh, definitely gives more sophisticated outputs from an AI perspective. I also personally use Gamma app and um, interact with the images on there in presentation mode myself. Um, however, it is um, still useful if you've got ideas about a concept that you want to hand over to a graphic designer, um, or I actually use it for um, Stripe product covers or thumbnail products. Um, I also use it for LinkedIn posts um, all the time because I do write about uh, GPT. So we're going to post this into the chat as well um, as an example, and you can play along with me as well. Um, so my example of this, um, I help um, consultants generate uh, money by becoming a AI powered consultant, please generate a book cover for me. So I'm going to pop that in here and we are going to um, see if that gets me the result. So sometimes um, I ran it just before I started this and it worked um, perfectly. Sometimes it will just give you an explanation. Um, I actually will show you what it did for me earlier, um, just before I started this call. Um, so here is a, an example of the image, um, an image um, result um, that I have asked it for. Um, and um, here's the exact, oh, I've got my next. So here's an example of that. You can see it's got some typos in there, but it I didn't even ask it. It's actually learned, it's got my, my name in the memory. Um, I've actually okayed that and given it some things to include in memory. So it's automatically put that on the cover. So um, it does come up with typos. However, this is as bad as AI and um, certainly the image um, is ever going to be. It's going to continue to get better and better at this. Um, having said that, for, it depends on the use case and what you're looking to use it for. Um, I have created some interesting inf infographics that, again, I'm not having to stick figure explain to someone um, and um, I'm able to hand it over to a graphic designer. All right. So our um, next one is text to code. Um, so this is um, incredibly useful uh, for software development. Um, if you're building a script, if you're wanting to build a website, um, business log logic implementation or AI implementation. 
Um, I've got a number of smaller businesses that use this. Uh, it's not um, certainly, um, ex, you know, Python um, super uh, developer level code. And I have had developers say, oh, the code's not that good. However, um, an example that I've used this for, um, I was uploading my YouTube video and it was hanging off the end of the page. I love it to all be on one page. I didn't even know what that um, called was called. Um, I pride myself on being able to solve problems. So I would normally go and research on YouTube and figure it out. I threw in the problem into ChatGPT. It told me I needed responsive text. I gave it the embedded code. It gave me the code back. And in less than a minute, I had solved my problem and it was all good in, um, in my YouTube video. All right. So um, this is our next prompt. Um, I, Judy, if you could uh, throw that into the chat. So based on that book cover, we also want to, we want to create the code for it. So what I had asked it to do here um, is the code. Um, I'm actually going to try it live in my other page. So we are going to go give me um, the code for this. It's going to give me the basic HTML and CSS code. Um, that we can use um, as well as normally it gives me some instructions on how to implement that um, and um, that is uh, working away there. All right, so it is still going. Again, I haven't even given it any text for the website, so it is generating um, something for that website. And you can imagine where we've started that marketing activity before where we've got the ideal customer portfolio. Um, we could use that basically as a sales landing page um, to spin up a uh, sales page really pretty quickly. I've done that end to end in about 15 minutes um, into gamma.app, which actually can spin out a website as well. So there we go. Um, and it's got some instructions on how to use that as well. All right, so back to our um, our next belt is um, our input output combination is voice to text. This is one of my favorite applications. So I am going to jump in to my text uh, into my GPT. Um, the good thing about the app to the web, it actually does integrate. So it will have um, your chat that you are working on in on your computer already in your chat. So I'm just going to look for my weekly, there's my weekly book cover. So what I'm going to do, um, you can see here in my app, and this is not available on the web, there's a little set of headphones. I'm going to click on that um, and I'm going to ask it, hey, GPT, can you please give me three more things to consider doing for the launch of this book. It's sure, here are three more things to consider for the launch of your book. The Million Dollar AI Consultant. One, create a launch plan with timeline. Okay, so I am going to interrupt that. And um, what I know, um, I'm just gonna flip that over into my GPT and see if it has um, automatically updated that. It does take a little minute. So we can see here it's automatically. Sure. That sounds like a good. It's automatically and it does it much faster in text than it actually does to speak it to us. So it's already got those three ideas in here on my screen as well. So a number of other use cases for this, you could dictate emails and documents, have it transcribed into text, um, recording customers' feedback, get it um, converted into written format, or ask it some business queries or um, get it to scroll the internet to come back with some research. I've done this when I've been driving along and I heard something on the news, but I didn't quite catch it. So I've actually asked it to troll the news for that specific topic. Um, verbally describe a complex problem, dictate meeting notes, um, be part of a brainstorm session where it's recording the notes and can create a set of action items. I used that with a colleague of mine um, last week we had a three-hour session. It's It listened in, it interjected and gave us some brainstorm ideas, but it summarized our entire session with our action points that were actually scattered all throughout um, the three hours in a very concise summary, and I didn't have to spend any time uh, um, actually doing that. Um, the other use case I've done, I forgot to write a letter for of support for my son who just got married and um, his wife was applying for her visa in Australia and had forgotten I was a month late getting it to them. I was driving to Canberra 
and I, it popped into my mind. So I asked GPT to help um, deliver or write a, uh, a letter, a very formal letter to the Australian embassy. I was tripping all over myself. I was all out of sequence. And it came back with a very structured, very formal with the Australian embassy um, address. So, um, and spat it back to me verbally. Um, and then I was actually able to give it some edits and it sent it back to me in text. And I was able to just copy and paste it um, and send it on to my son. Um, as the good mum that I am. All right, so we've already done this example. Um, our next example is uh, moving on to the image to text um, output combination. Pent potential use cases for this. Um, so visual data analysis, um, brand compliance checks. Um, so assessing um, marketing materials um, with your brand guidelines, um, especially if you do have graphic designers or agencies um, doing work for you. It's like, okay, run this through with our brand guidelines. Um, some product feedback based on um, design images, um, image-based surveys. I've done a number of bespoke um, workshops now with a couple of retailers and with the potential use cases we've used is um, taking images of VM and asking it to give us back improvements based on a set of documented standards as well. So for retailers that have wholesalers, you know, 450 doors across the country, it's significant um, you know, use case um, for this particular input output as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop in a slide. So this slide here is what we call our Agile AI cameras. ROI is particularly important to us as we're training. It's not just generic training. We want every single person doing our training to be able to demonstrate every time they're building a GPT what their return on investment for their role actually is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to GPT. And I'm going to ask it to please explain this slide for me. Um, and the good thing is that uh, GPT does it, doesn't mind if I have spelling mistakes. So I'm just going to pop in the screenshot. It's going to upload that. It's just uploading there. It's pretty quick to upload. And so what we will see, it's actually going to do um, a pretty good job, I haven't given it any instructions, of explaining what it's visually seeing. So the sections, it's breaking it down, um, as well as what we're tr actually trying to calculate and the ROI at the bottom with a summary. Um, so that's done that very, very quickly. Um, so what I have also used this for um, is when I go to seminars and I'm taking screenshots, I get it to extract Im image and information, or I do my slides and I actually ask it to give me speaking notes for slides um, as well. All right, so um, our next our next um, input output we're going from we're going to go from web now to text. Um, this is something else I use every single week. Um, so market market research summary. I worked with a retailer again um, in the last week, and they do lots of um, research across the internet based on trends and um, th especially from a marketing context, what are people wanting to know? So doing that market research and delivering it in a consistent output, super valuable. Competitive analysis and researching what your competitors are up to, trend monitoring, um, staying on top of uh, regulatory updates, budget summaries um, from the government, um, case law, all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do now, um, GV, if you could pop this into the chat for the team as well. Um, we're going to research the biggest news in the past week in AI and give me a summary. I'm just going to flip back over into GPT and pick up my... So one thing I do find, um, I actually test this in GPT each week because sometimes um, it does give me older news, um, but it's actually been really good. Again, like I feel like I said, it's getting better all the time. So don't just because you're not getting an answer today doesn't mean that it won't continue to get better. So keep coming back to it. So it's it has actually given me. Um, I know that um, is a little old. This is um, new content. So um, great. Um, I love to incorporate information like this into my newsletter that's going out on a weekly basis. However, I also use a another app, um, I'll give it to you as well, called perplexity.ai. So perplexity.ai is akin to Google. I mean, it's really hard to find anything useful in Google because of all the ads these days. So Google met 
chat chat GPT. And I do find that the summaries and the relevance to the specific task output when I'm researching news delivers me a good quality output. Having said that, GPT a couple of weeks has actually been better than the perplexity tool. So um, I'm using the free perplexity.ai tool and the paid GPT tool there. So again, play with it, continue to look at how is this actually helping me? How can I use this in what I put out there um, to the world? Okay, our next, um, our next uh, output is going from file to text. So this one, um, we can summarize documents. Um, we can do financial analysis or contract reviews. So uh, I had a client who received an 80-page document, a small excavating client, um, received a massive contract from a client and didn't want to go ahead with it, but it was um, one of his biggest clients. So what we did was we threw it into GPT, got it to summarize the key points um, from a contractual perspective, and we then dove deep into those areas um, and um, got it to come back with some what would we um, uh, what would we uh, potentially go back and ask our client on this area? Now, I've done a lot of contract review um, in my life, um, but it could be something that you then are able to summarize and send back to your lawyer saying, I want more information on these areas to help keep your legal costs down. I wouldn't solely rely on it for really important document. Again, it's a risk um, a risk reward payoff, um, but it can help you understand what it is that you're looking at. Data interpretation um, from, you know, inventory summaries to, you know, looking at employee engagement surveys, um, as well as policy up, um, update notifications. So what I am now going to do is get it to summarize and it, it can summarize anything. It skims it very quickly and gives you um, a really great output document. I'm going to go back into my GPT. Um, I'm going to upload into it um, the success principles by uh, Jack Canfield. The first couple of chapters, just because um, it's a very long uh, PDF. Um, and I'm going to ask it to summarize this file for me. Um, and let's see what it spits out. So again, that's in PDF. You don't have to only upload a PDF um, document. And it's given me the introduction, key highlights, key principles, um, as well as a chapter summary very, very quickly. So as you can see there, we are accessing any book that is in these kind of formats, notable quotes, even um, how we can then apply it as well as the conclusion. Um, so really, really valuable insights there. Um, uh, the next um, input output is voice to voice. This is actually probably my favorite one. Um, so, and I, I certainly use this on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So practicing business pictures and receiving feedback on how you can improve your business pictures, having interactive voice conversations. So if you are having a strategy session, um, leveraging ChatGPT to interject, um, to challenge your thinking processes inside a strategy session, using voice commands to um, retrieve business intelligence reports verbally while you're driving to your next meeting, um, conducting mock negotiations, uh, leadership coaching um, as well, um, or auditory summaries of latest in industries and trends. Um, one of the things that is continuing to improve, and I've noticed improvement just even over the last four weeks, is the latency, which is the lag between me speaking and ChatGPT um, speaking back to me. Another really interesting use case that I spoke to these retailers about the other day, they have vendors in China. Um, you can use ChatGPT so that you can, you can instruct it whenever you hear someone speaking in Chinese, give it to me in English. Whenever you hear it in English, give it back to me in Chinese. Um, so you can actually have a conversation in any language on ChatGPT to record the, the screen at the same time as well, especially if you're doing uh, vendor negotiations, super useful. Um, so whenever you're in the car, one of the biggest hacks that you might consider um, is that you can turn your in-between moments into an on-demand university. So most people don't know that it is trained on the entire internet right now. It's skimming the internet. The chat GP T5 will actually go deep on the internet, um, go deep in its um you know, training. Um, so it will actually be able to give you a summary of your favorite book, um, refreshing um, insights as you're going into speak um, in meetings. An example, I won't actually go through this one right now, uh, but you could say, hey, GPT, give me the top 10 ideas from this book and why it would be relevant to me in my role as 
Um, so um, if you could pop that um, into the chat for the team and they can pick that up as well. I am going to skip over this one and keep going. We still have quite a bit to get through in the next 15 minutes. Finally, we've got code to text. Um, again, tons of different use cases. Um, we have code review errors, so diagnosis for errors if you've got bugs, um, security audits, um, technical translations. Um, I know that uh, there have been businesses that have been left in the lurch by developers and um, they've had to figure out well, where, where we are with the code um, so we can use, um, use it for this particular case. So I'm going to again flip over into my GPT uh, for the last time. Um, and I have some, I've got a website here. This is um, the website that our uh, business um, was based on and why we pivoted into AI based on Read It For Me, a summary of over the best thousand um, business books. I've gone in to collect the um, code um, from this website, which is just a control U uh, functionality. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to ask GPT to please analyze um, the code and give me suggestions for it. So I'm going to copy that in here. So just uh, imagine the potential use cases you've got for this, not only of your own website, but potentially your uh, competitors um, and what they are doing, uh, certainly from an SEO perspective. Again, the retailers that I'm working with, they spend over $6,000 a month with SEO experts. So um, being able to pull some of that back uh, to focus on um, other areas of the business. So here we go, a uh, heap of improvements there um, that it's given me. Um, the next question I'm, I'm going to ask it is to actually give me a detailed um, on-site SEO uh, report. Um, we've got that finished um, and um, hopefully it will give me a full detailed report um, for the SEO. Here we go. And it's giving me those um, keywords there and that's just um, on one page. Okay, so going back to our presentation, as we said, I um, hope you've got something out of that. We know that we've done the homework, we would uh, the, done our training, we would actually then give you homework. Um, each one of our sessions has homework to get accredited. Um, and what we would have you do is basically do the work um, that I've just done and record it on Loom in a single chat going through what you've done, because it's um, about not just oh, okay, well, I know how to do that. It's demonstrating that you've actually done the work to get certified. Um, and then we will open up to q and I won't do that right now because I want to flip through the rest of the belts. Um, so in our yellow belt, uh, we're going to go really quickly through this. Um, this is where we actually start to take you through how you can use it in your role. It's five different stages. The first stage of that is um, role responsibilities. So we would uh, take a screenshot of this slide and we um, would ask ChatGPT. this is where I'm going to you know, demonstrate some of the things that you already know. Um, and I'm going to pop it um, into ChatGPT. I'm going to start a new chat so it clears the memory. I'm going to drop in that image. I'm going to get it to extract that um, and tell me what it's seeing in this image. And then I'm going to get it to actually apply that to uh, my role uh, for the case of this um, this example, I'm going to assume that I am the sales manager. Fantastic. I'm going to get it to do that now um, as a sales manager of a small manufacturing company. It's going to list out my 12 role responsibilities. Um, I am going to keep going uh, for now. Um, uh, but what we basically will do is get it to give us the input and output combinations for all of those 10, for every single role responsibility that we, so we can start to figure out how in my role can I actually start to use ChatGPT. I'm going to flip over the rest of Yellow Belt so I can get through um, the next slides. So I am now, um, what we do is we take this from role responsibilities into a standard operating procedure for every single area of our role into a monthly robot, a weekly plan, and then a daily checklist. And we walk you through each stage in GPT how to actually do that. So um, our orange belt then, so this is where it gets really fun and sexy, um, using AI as your cognitive super assistance about having your world's top experts in, in any area of business in your pocket. So um, we actually, um, part of the, the first 
part of understanding and chunking this down is actually starting to understand what the problem is that you're trying to solve to come up with an action plan and then who is the expert out there that can actually help us so we actually give you the code to break this down on how to actually build these that you can then apply for yourself because we know that books have everything it just takes too long to actually get through it um, so um, we step through that and give you the code on how to actually build those every step of the way uh, we then get to the green belt. So this is where the meat and potatoes really is. The rubber hits the road, so to speak. Um, so this is where we have uh, folks tell us, there's no way I'm actually going to be building AI tools myself. But what we know, every single person that enters our back belt program learns how to produce AI tools, not just the script that we're giving you, but build them themselves. We actually teach you how to become an AI tool developer. It's um, a lengthy process, but it still fits within our, our time frame. Our trainings are pretty quick and crisp. Um, there's a lot to get through, um, but one, what we guarantee is that by the end of the green belt, you will have built your own role coach for whatever role you're you're in, whether you're a solopreneur or you're a marketing manager um, in your job um, or your business. Um, one of the the things that we know is true is that your um, able to build these tools um, once in uh, less time than it takes you to actually deliver it. So imagine the efficiency that you can gain when you're delivering this for things that you do over and over and over again. All right. So um, on the other side of that, um, what we have uh, coming out um, is um, incredible um, insights around possibilities that people can now start to see for their role um, and that level of confidence um, is starting to kick in. Blue Belt um, is where we just kind of dial it up again and we're um, really starting to build tools that um, deliver 100x improvement through a very simple three-step um, process um, and this is where we all uh, come back to our AI Agile Canvas um, and step through. We start to envision what the process actually is. You don't need a fancy chart like this, just a pen and paper. Stepping through, what do we actually need to do? And then how do we actually um, start to develop? What can we, of those steps, then um, automate with AI? Again, we teach you exactly the right things to do to actually be able to figure that out. Um, and then we start to build the GPT um, and exploit what that um, looks like to be able to deliver that 100x improvement. Um, and um, obviously the last step to be able to then, really important to us that you can actually develop that ROI um, as you're going through. And then Purple Belt, um, this is where we get to kind of take a breather and start to explore, well, okay, if GPTs and AI is taking over most of my role, what am I going to be doing? Um, so we start to look at the future uh, and build um, what my role would be because an appropriate question people start to ask is, what is the role that I have in the future? What does it look like and how do I do it? And, you know, we uh, coach people that, you know, it's about staying one to two steps ahead so that you can start to build um, what that future and create the future of what your role will look like. And we have um, some training tools and step-by-step -step process on how you will actually map that out for yourself so you can uh, see the future and then go and create it. And then into our brown belt, um, this is where we give you um, the instructions to start to build tools that string together tasks, not only at a role level, but um, we call this an AI agent and it exponentially builds what we've done um, across different roles and also across different departments. So we teach you how to zoom out um, with these AI agents and build a process that navigates across different roles like that marketing agents agent um, output that I uh, went through earlier in our session. And then finally, our black belt. And this is a reminder that we circle all the way back to the beginning. Then it's as much about technology, uh, psychology, as it is about technology um, and coaching and mentoring people through that six stage process um, from indifference through to transformation. And now that you've made this journey, um, the idea is that um, you're encouraging others on that journey to create a culture um, of AI-powered um, growth in your business, um, as well as learning some strategy tools and how to build your own favorite strategy tools specifically for your business, just like our stay-at-home mom, our fractional CFO, and our overworked manager. And then after our foundation is set, um, you'll decide whether you actually want to continue the journey into our executive um, or leaders program as well, um, because as you will now start to understand the power of the work, 
of the future of workforce is going to be changing. Okay, so wrapped up all in an hour. I do have, if you have questions on uh, privacy, I um, do have information on that too. Um, our, certainly uh, ChatGPT, when you have the paid option, you can turn and toggle off um, training the open AI. Certainly in Teams, it all automatically does that as well. So um, your privacy and not training um, external, uh, external, the external um machine that is in, and uh, driving ChatGPT is available. Um, but one thing I recommend and work with businesses on as well is coming up with an acceptable use policy as well as protocols and, and what to be um, training and what should and shouldn't be put into those GPTs. So what's next? Would love um, if you've got any questions in the last few minutes. Um, but also, if you would like me to come in and do this workshop, I customize it specifically to your business. So all those use cases will be highly super relevant to your business. And I would love to come in and do that for free for your leadership team, uh, for your business. Um, or if you'd like to book some time with me, I'm happy to go ahead and have a one-on-one -on -one with you to explore what's possible um, and answer any other questions that you have. For the last couple of minutes, would love to open up to any questions or feedback. Anybody would like to come off mute? Hi, Lexi. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Hi, Kylie. When you, with Chat GPT, yeah. um, is are there two versions? Is there a free version and a paid version? There is. There is uh, the free version is Chat GPT three point five, and the paid version is four O. Um, and then there's also a Teams version, so where you've got it inside of businesses, and it gives you additional functionality um, behind the scenes and how to share chats and GPTs across Teams. Um, and then there's also an enterprise level um, that um, has different functionality again. So there's actually four yeah. different levels today. And yeah, we'll probably have more in the future. Thank you. Yeah. With what's the difference again between the 3.5 and the four? Um the, well the outputs are going to be better. They're going to be faster. Um, and the 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 quality of the consistency of the outputs will be much better. So the functionality and, um, you know, what you're trying to generate as an output significantly like leaps and bounds ahead of uh, 3.5. And, and terms, also the, the amount of um, interaction that you can have in an hourly basis is significantly more in the uh, 4.0. So if you're using a lot, like um, certainly I am, um, you don't want to be restricted by, you know, having just a handful of queries that you can use with ChatGPT. Yeah. In terms of the data, is it the how update the data is? Is that um, yeah. the same? Yeah, it is the same. Yeah, so they update the model um, to the latest. So I think the latest update was just a couple of weeks ago. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? Um, Alexa. Hi, Michelle. Hi, how are you? I'm very good. Um, Thank you. With the training... So if you take me as an executive all the way through from white belt to black belt. Yes. Um, and then you mentioned having access to like thousands of experts. So is that ongoing or is that just during the training? Uh, thousands of, well, we actually in, in this black belt, we actually teach you to write your own. So like yeah. as of basically as of orange belt, you will have access to those experts and any expert that you choose to write a G, your own GPT for you can do that oh, from, from, from Orange Belt basically. Yeah. Okay, so second week, so while, week. while while I'm while I've still got my training wheels on, there's like some Chat GPTs that I can access. But oh, by, the time I, by the time I get to the end of the training, I can just literally write my own. Uh, every week you'll be learning how to write your own at just a different okay. level of sophistication. We're just going to be giving you some examples, but absolutely. Okay, I, I'm just trying to get my head around that. <laughs> yeah, no, great questions. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Alexi, this is Ram here. Hi, Ram. Hi. Um, just uh, can, uh, carrying on first with the last uh, question now, uh, attendant. Um, um, does this whole process involve a lot of coding? Or is no, it just, you know, general... No. General it's knowledge not. about all this, how to use ChatGPT to the 
for a particular requirement that you have? Um, we actually use, when we say code and we're going to give you the code, it's actually, and I should have specified this earlier, it's actually English language. It's a natural language programming. So the coding that we use with ChatGPT is English um, and we can ask it to give us code back. Um, it generally uses, it can give us HTML, um, CSS, the scripts or um, Python script as well. Um, but what we interact with it as and what we're teaching people is just using English. Um, I also have clients in Germany um, and I interact and have done presentations where I'm delivering the examples in English and it's giving, giving it back in German the responses in German to um, my clients as well. So it's just English. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, basically, uh, I know English to German, German to English, that's fine. I understand that. But what I'm saying is that do we have to, we don't have to learn actual coding like Python or Pandas or something like that. No, no, you just type it in in English. So the coding that we're giving you, coding is English. Okay. And then the other question I have is that you said white bells, yellow bells, orange bells. So, for example, if you want to stop with the orange belt, that's all I want to go up to. Is it yeah. possible? Or is it, do you have to go all the way to the back belt every time? Um, I haven't had that question before, but I'm happy to have a conversation with you around what that could look like. Because in my situation, I'm actually retired now after yeah. running my business for many years. But I'm yeah. interested in this uh, concept of AI, using AI in different um, business uh, you know, applications um, yeah. where clients have I've had clients in the past. Uh, and see how it could help them in their businesses to quicken and do things better. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm interested in. I'm not interested in coding. I'm more interested in the technical aspect of it. Uh, just the usage. Yeah, how to fantastic. Get it to you, the, what you want to use it for. Yeah, great. Well, I'd be happy to have a chat with you offline. I'll send you a message after the call if you like, and we can catch up next week. Thank you very much. Alex. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thanks, guys, for the interaction. Um, it is right now on one o'clock. Um, unless there is any other burning questions, I am going to wrap up and I will make sure that you all get a copy of the uh, replay. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.